I've just jumped back in time to before assembling the rocket stove. As you can see, I have all of these pristine and beautiful laser cut parts. Before I can assemble anything, I have to prep the surface of these stainless steel parts. As you can see, the back side of the parts are very rough and they have some decently sized burrs that I need to get rid of. To soften the edges, I have got myself an orbital sander with a 240 grit piece of sandpaper. <laughs> Alright, in this next step, I'll be scribing lines along the plates right here so that I have some guidelines to follow when I'm bending. To find the bending measurements, I just have to look at this 3D drawing. If you can see it in this lighting right here, I've made a scribe line across where I want to put the bend. I have put the sheet metal into the bender and I've just lined it up with the indicating line right along this edge. And now I just have to do some fine adjustments and then I can try to do a 90 degree bend. That was the first part, and to see if it fits, I can just use the legs right here and bring it right down. It's kind of snug, but I think it will do. And just like that, it fits pretty nicely into those tabs. And this wobbling will be eliminated by small brackets attached to that hole right there. Now what I have to do from now on is just repeat the process that I've just gone through right now. And I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see if everything fits together and if the tolerances that I made on the 3D drawing were accurate enough for me to rivet everything at the end. Alright, I've made most of the sheet metal parts and I've just lined them up on the table right here. And when I made the drawing, I thought I would be able to assemble it all with the rivets right here. But I did make some mistakes and I will have to do a slight bit of welding, which obviously wasn't the point of this build, but I can't go around it at this point. So I'll just start assembling from the bottom up and then we can just see how it goes.
Well, at least this fits pretty nicely. It isn't supposed to go on and off that often, but if you want to switch out these attachments, which I will be making more of, maybe a pizza oven or like an actual grill, then it's nice to have this ability. But for now, this will just have to stay on. Some of the other challenges I'm facing at the current moment is that I have forgotten to send the file for this part, so it hasn't been made. The one that covers this part, so I'll just have to make one by hand. This door right here doesn't quite fit under the rivets because I didn't think they would go out that far. So I just have to trim off a bit of these two edges. And lastly, I forgot to project the holes into the underlying part. There's only a hole for these tiny brackets that hold the feet in the outermost layer, which is not enough. It has to go through, so I'll just be drilling a couple of holes here and also here. I also need to do this air valve. I'll make this air valve. And then I haven't bent up the lid right here because I didn't know if my dimensions would fit correctly. So I just have to do that at some point. I will also have to do a hinge. I don't know if I will weld it on and just screw it on. Other than that, I think this project is going pretty great. I really like the aesthetic with the rivets. It really suits the purpose of this rocket stove right here. All right, I've just made some adjustments to this piece right here. I've just trimmed off a tiny bit of these two edges with the angle grinder. So now it slides in quite nicely. It seals decently. There are some spots where you have some air gaps, but it isn't perfect since it's the first ever piece like this I've ever made. And I just really, really hope it's going to work at the end because it was actually quite expensive getting these parts laser cut. And all of these rivets, since they're stainless, they're also quite pricey. Therefore, I would really appreciate you guys liking this video and subscribing to my channel to help me grow it bigger so that I can reach even more people and show them these great builds. And of course, if you have any suggestions, please write them in the comments. But now, let's get back to the build. If you get this material too hot, it hardens and then you can never ever drill through. That's just the thing you have to keep in mind. This plate right here is still quite sharp and has a lot of burst, so I'll just clean it up and then I'll get right on to bending. Are they getting me being again? Next up is the ashtray, which is almost finished, but I still need a handle of some kind. This should be the last plate I have to bend. And now I just need to figure out what kind of hinge I want to make. For the lid right here, I have found a hinge that I think is made of stainless steel. It did smoke quite a lot when I tried to weld on it, but it seems to be okay. It 
it definitely is covered with plastic because when I grind it like a fine white powder comes from it and that's not really normal but I definitely think this will hold quite well and the lid opens and closes quite nicely the handle will be pretty simple I'll just cut off maybe 100 millimeters and then bend it in the middle and weld it on right after Now this just has to be welded on and then I'm finished. This rocket stove build has finally been completed and now we are ready for a test fire. But we can't start anything without a bit of fuel. My go-to fuel source are these used bits of lumber from pallets. The two main reasons for using this type of fuel is that it is completely dry and it is also free in my case. To fire up the rocket stove I'll generally be using smaller sticks in the beginning to get the fire going and when the stove is roaring I can start adding the bigger pieces. And when the fire is going all by itself, I'll put in the ashtray again. And then it should be self-sustaining. And if you just take a quick look at the flames, this year is with the air valve closed, and this year is with the air valve open. This is open, this is closed. Open and closed. There will always be smoke in the starting phase, but as the stove gets hotter and hotter, more and more of the fuel is actually burnt, and therefore, no smoke will come out of the burn chamber, or at least less smoke. It's also very clear to see that the smoke is sucked into the burn chamber due to the drafting effect of the heat rising through this tube right here. And when that actually rises up, it creates a low pressure differential right here in the bottom that sucks in the air and oxygenates the fuel. That's why there's only a tad bit of smoke coming out of the fuel door right here. And after only a few minutes, the combustion itself is completely smokeless. And if you take a listen, you can even hear the air rushing through the stove. A fun thing that I noticed is that all of my fingerprints are burning off right here on the pipe. You can really see how much I've been handling these materials while working with them. The reason why the flame is a bit rich and there's some smoke coming out is because I'm using very light pine. If you use oak or birch or woods like that, it will burn much cleaner. But this is very cheap and easy to get my hands on, as I just mentioned earlier in the video. Stones like these are a very great asset for those of you who are serious about the outdoors. And it is also very great for those of you who want to become independent of the grid. One full tube of fuel with light pine will give you about 15 to 20 minutes of intense flame. Which means you can do a lot of big cooks. And you also have the ashtray, which means that cleaning out the rocket stove while it's running is incredibly easy. I've also angled the fuel pipe 60 degrees so that the fuel easily goes into the chamber. I have found that the angle matters a lot and if it is too shallow, the fuel will not ever reach the fire. I 
I would say that this project went rather well, even though sheet metal is very difficult the show to work with. The outcome was delightful and effective. As you can see, the flame is very intense. I really do like the rivets. It gives it quite an industrial look. That will be the end of today's video, and if you enjoyed watching me make this beautiful rocket stove, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And I've also heard that activity down in the comment section is very beneficial for my channel and for its growth. And therefore, you should feel free to write anything you want in the comments, especially new video ideas. And I'm also open to discuss how this rocket stove works. And I really hope you enjoyed. Bye bye guys, and see you in the next video.